Hi, my name is Abu Bakr Salim. I play Bayek in Assassin's Creed Origins. I auditioned for it um, through my acting agent, thinking that it was a animated TV series. It was advertised as an animated TV series, and um, with motion capture. And yeah, so it went to. The, it was like a standard audition. Um, got into the room, had sides, did my lines, and then got to the second round. And then at the second round, they told me it was for a video game for Assassin's Creed, to which I lost my mind. And um, and where we, they ended up saying that okay, so because it's for because it's for motion caption, because it's for the video game, the way that they did the audition and the way that they, they filmed the audition was that they used a bigger space. So there wasn't any tight, tight shots, so there wasn't any sitting down or standing. It was, they wanted to see me move. And I remember that process being really different to, to, other, to other auditions, because normally you're just sitting down and it's still, and it's all within the face. Whereas in this one, specifically, they wanted your body. And yeah, so that was, that was how I got into it, really. <laughs> yeah. There is this huge, like, you know, realm of possibilities of, because you've got to think of the player, I think. There's a lot of, you know, you've got to really think of, you know, the player choices and you've got to be able to <laughs> perform, you know, with the same intensity depending on what the player chooses. And so, you know, there's a lot more kind of, there's a lot more stories, you know, there's a lot more branching off. Whereas, you know, whereas t film and TV is quite linear, you know, video game, it, it's very much like a tree. It could branch down this way or it could branch the other way or, you know, so you've got all these other choices that you've got to play with. And, um, and it's a challenge. It is a challenge. And, um, but at the same time, it's so much fun. You know, it's so, it is so liberating because it is like, it is that, it goes back to that feeling of, okay, let's imagine that we are over here or let's imagine we made this choice. So you've got all these different play things to play with. Welcome, Breakthrough Brits! Oh, God. <laughs> so, uh, how did the, the whole Breakthrough Brits thing, uh, thing come about for you individually each? Uh, I was, I got contacted with my agent to, to apply. So you apply and you submit, like, your body of work and why you think you should be Breakthrough Brit. And, and you're like, you must be like, can you not do that yeah, for me? You'd be, <laughs> like, you'd be like, okay, and then you, but I don't know, it's, it's easier when you put it down into words and, and then you realise what BAFTA kind of means to you and, um, which is what for you? I suppose it's... I don't want to test you for that, sorry. But it's, it, I think it is. Just, it's, it's just a wealth of talent that you get to celebrate with. And also the, the way in which they support their talent as well. Like with BAFTA Breakthrough, you know, you get mentorships and they kind of like, you know, support you throughout the year. Yeah. Yeah. Or you get to go to amazing events uh, like this. Yeah. Where you're giving an award away, am I right? I am. How are you feeling about that? It's fine. We just yeah, it's great. Good. Well done. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, if I just like because normally you meet people who've been in like the industry for years and they're the absolutely in it. Yeah, I think I'll just find someone in the crowd like De Niro and just eyeball him for the whole thing. Yeah. Well, De Niro's like, why is she eyeballing me? What have I done? Intensely looking at me. I think if you went in and looked at the whole room, you might pass out. Yeah. Yes. Yes, you do. Um, <laughs> what about you? How did it come about for you, sir? Um, I produced a film called Animals. I know it. Yeah. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Emma Jane Unsworth's uh, book. Yes, and so uh, and that was considered, um, you know, my breakthrough project, uh, and therefore, yeah, I get to be part of this amazing group of people and to have the incredible support of BAFTA so yeah it feels like a real privilege. How was that for you to make by the way? Oh it was incredible I'm so proud it's of it. It's a book I think that really it's interesting it's got such a cult following that book. It does it does indeed yeah it was a real labour of love um, it took us many years to get the, the finance together and we had an amazing team of people and we had an absolute blast making it so it was really important to us to tell a great story about female friendship about women who are flawed and messy and behave as women do yeah. um, and we're really proud of the results. So, yeah, well done and also just getting I mean you know, my wife works in film, and actually just to get a film, to option a book, to then get it made, that's, I mean, that's a victory in itself. Thank you, it feels, it feels that way. Five years in the making, so. <laughs> my name's Abu Bakr Salim. I'm an actor, and I'm a breakthrough Brit. <laughs> okay. I started with theatre, did my first TV job at, I think, 16. Went to drama school, did some more theatre, then I did the video game. It was a pivotal moment for me anyway. It, it shifted a lot of how I would then approach characters for TV and film. You're putting in at least, you know, 100 hours worth of voice work and acting into a character, and you're having to get the audience to kind of do, enjoy listening to you for that long. That really informed the way in which I approached work afterwards. Best piece of advice that I was given was brush your teeth daily, <laughs> genuinely. But if we're talking, you know, in the art sense, uh, 
just be honest. Ultimately, you're more interesting as you as an individual rather than like, let's say, the character you're playing or whatever, you know? I mean, like for me, it's, it's, it's all about honesty. It's all about connecting with someone on an honest level. Raised by Wolves is definitely my breakthrough role simply because it's the biggest project I've worked on. I'm working with Ridley Scott and uh, also put me in a position where I've had to take the lead. Yeah, definitely a breakthrough role. <laughs> yeah. I have no idea what, could, what, what the future now holds. It's exciting, but it's also terrifying because you don't know what's gonna, what's gonna happen, right? It's, it's brilliant. Real cool. And what about you, Mr. Assassin's Creed? Oh, mate. <laughs> I literally, I was just walking to the car and found out I got it. So I was just, you know, kind of like one, one of those winnings. So, yeah. No, uh, no. again, it was one of those uh, things that, yeah, again, my agent called up and said, I think you should do this. And I was like, OK, sure, go for it. And uh, yeah, and then here I am thinking that, oh, wow, won like a lottery ticket. Yeah. But, yeah, but no, it's just been it's just been wonderful. I mean, I've done a lot with BAFTA anyway, especially with like the Game Awards and um, uh, being nominated like two years ago with Assassin's Creed. So it's just been wonderful to be also recognized within this sort of film and TV area as well, because, you know, again, that's, that's what I'm... When you go to act as a character in, in a game, yeah. I'm a big gamer, when you go to oh, act... Nice. So what do you... How does that physically manifest itself? Will you go into a studio and with all the movements and the voice booth, or how does it, how does it work it's, exactly? It's the same thing. as It's like a mix of TV and film. It's like you're in a massive volume, like a warehouse with 250 cameras on you. You're wearing a beautiful tight Lycra suit, which I think you'd look beautiful in, by the way. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, no worries. And then literally, yeah, it's just you're doing scene after scene after scene. It's, it's like a mix, a hybrid of theatre and, and, and uh, film and TV. Sounds like long days. Yeah, it's, it's long. I mean, I was on Assassin's Creed. I did that for a year and a half. I was just in and out of the studio in Montreal, just doing it, and it was, it was, but it was exhilarating. It's so liberating as well. Like it was, it was beautiful. Yeah. Congratulations to all of you. And well done on having good agents too. Aren't it? <laughs> I'm Neve Alger. I'm an actor, and I'm a breakthrough Brit. My introduction to acting was probably making little short sketches and movies when I was a kid. Um, I'm like the youngest of five, so I took it upon myself to uh, entertain and make my, my siblings and my family laugh. I suppose I'm drawn to filmmakers who don't shy away from portraying the truth in, a, in the most kind of honest and gritty way where it's not airbrushed. It felt, and not in an arrogant way, but it felt really right when I was involved in the virtues because I think it's because when I was growing up and when I was really focusing in and studying acting I just watched all his movies all the time. I played the character called Dina. She's a bit of a troubled character with like a checkered past. The first day on set where account you know Dina is introduced into the story. I remember I like read the read the script and I was like that is the coolest way for a character to be introduced into a television series where you know you know, literally comes in with a bang. The lovely thing about Breakthrough is it, it doesn't just celebrate actors, you've got producers, writers, directors. What is so interesting about, about this industry is that people come into it with a, such a diverse background. You know, no one has gotten where they are. There's no two people that would kind of got, to, got into acting or got into directing the same, same way. And I think that's what it is. It's just like a collaboration of creative misfits who have all just decided to tell stories. I think there is so much to mine from that way of storytelling. I think video games is, I mean, it was my way in. I mean, I remember as a kid, I, I, you know, I, I was dyslexic, I couldn't read books. Uh, you know, TVs, shows and films, I didn't really connect to because there wasn't any person I could really connect to. But video games, because it is so interactive and, and it involves you, uh, you know, in the story and going on this journey with this character, you know, it was, it was, it was just so, it was, it was so cool to, you know, to kind of get involved in. So I, I love the idea of being able to tell a story that way through a video game, through someone, you know, going on this journey with me interactively, spending eight, you know, hundreds of hours with me, you know, seeing this world that has been created by, you know, these people who really love what they're doing. And yeah, I think I definitely want to, want to venture more into that and see more into that and play more into that, absolutely. The one thing that's kind of, that I've tried to really do is just focus on my own journey, not compare myself to 
other, you know, my peers and just try and just do what I love and kind of keep that love going and keep fighting and keep going. Because it is tough. It's, it's you, know, there's, you know, I could be working now. I could be doing these great interviews now. And then I could, you know, in a month's time, I'd be at home twiddling my thumbs, probably playing my game. But like, it's like, it's, um, you know, it, it can shift and change so quickly. But I think it, there is that, if you really want to do it, and you know you and you really feel like this is this is this is for me just keep going it'll happen it will happen because you, you know the more you kind of give off to the universe it will give back in some way shape and form